In this video, we're going to describe the relationship of luminosity to an object's temperature and its surface area. Stars are objects that we will study in detail in this introductory astronomy course. They are gigantic objects that are made primarily of the element hydrogen. They're also made of helium, but they are primarily hydrogen and they are extremely hot. However, they do vary in temperature depending on the type of, the type of star that we're talking about. Because they are so tremendously hot, they are incandescent. That is, they give off light by virtue of being uh, so, so hot. How much light they give off does depend on how hot they are. We need to discuss a few different types of uh, vocabulary terms before we get into luminosity. One of those is energy. So during this course, I'll often talk about different types of energy, mainly radiant energy, because in astronomy we're concerned with light. But sometimes I'll talk about the uh, fundamental categories of energy, so kinetic, potential, and radiant energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion, so any object that is uh, moving has uh, kinetic energy associated with it. The faster something moves, the more kinetic energy it has. Potential energy is the energy that an object uh, has stored within it that could be converted into usable energy. The uh, and an example of potential energy would be chemical potential energy, so the energy stored in food and uh, another example of potential energy is gravitational potential energy. So the energy that uh, something potentially has because it's very high off the ground or very far away from uh, some other massive object. Energy is generally measured in a unit called joules, but you can also measure it in calories and ergs. Calories is the unit of energy that you're probably familiar with because calories are the uh, energy that uh, food energy or food uh, chemical potential energy in food is uh, measured in. To give you a comparison for uh, what a joule of energy is, it takes one joule of energy to lift an apple from the ground one meter above the ground. And uh, if you wanted to burn one food calorie, uh, it would uh, you'd have to lift that apple uh, several thousand times in order to equal just uh, uh, the one food calorie. So a joule is a fairly small amount of energy. I'll also use the word temperature, and in science temperature means something very specific. Temperature is the average kinetic energy of a collection of particles such as air or water molecules. And so in the image here I have a container with a lot of uh, dots. Those dots could represent air molecules in a room or water molecules inside a bucket of water. The faster those molecules are moving on average, the higher the temperature. And so we cannot talk about the temperature of an individual particle. And so photons do not have temperature individually. Uh, an air molecule does not have a temperature. When we talk about temperature, we're talking about the collective kinetic energy of a lot of particles. And temperature scales, you're probably familiar with at least one. In the United States, we often use Fahrenheit. In other countries, Celsius is very common. And they are uh, interchangeable, but you do have to convert units back and forth. In this lecture, I'm not going to go through any, uh, I'm not going to go through any calculations uh, converting one form of temperature to another. Astronomers and physical scientists often use kelvins, uh, or kelvin, as the temperature scale. And kelvin and celsius use similar temperature increments, but kelvin is more fundamental physically. Zero kelvin is called absolute zero, or minus 273.15 celsius, and absolute zero on the kelvin scale is when you'd have a collection of particles and there would be no motion. So if we were describing if we were describing statistically the average motion of a collection of particles and there was no motion, that would be zero. Practically speaking, 
This does not occur in nature or even in the laboratory because of quantum effects, but for classical physics we can describe uh, systems where there is essentially no motion. Now we can define luminosity, and this is a fundamental concept that we'll use often in astronomy during this course. Luminosity is how much energy an object puts off or gives out in all directions per second. So it's a rate. It's a rate of energy output. And if we measure it in joules per second, we can define a new unit for that. And one joule per second is called a watt. And you've probably heard of watts because you've installed light bulbs in fixtures before and you've seen that light bulbs have an energy output uh, written on them in watts. And so for example, a 100 watt light bulb is giving off 100 joules of energy, in this case radiant energy, per second. What about something like the sun? So the sun is much larger and much hard, hotter than an incandescent light bulb. The number of joules it gives off per second is 3.8 times 10 to the 26 joules per second. So that's 3.8 times a trillion trillion 10, let's see, we can go. So the number of joules per second is 100 trillion trillion joules per second. That is one solar luminosity. Often when we compare the luminosities of stars, we're comparing them to the luminosity of the sun. And I'll give you some examples of that a little bit later. So how is the size of an object and its temperature related to its energy output? In physics, there's actually a fundamental concept called the Stefan-Boltzmann Law. And this relates these three things together. The energy output, or luminosity that an object has, is proportional to its surface area times the fourth power of its temperature, or temperature to the fourth power. And so the hotter an object is, the more energy it will radiate out, or the more photons it will give off. The larger the object, also, the more photons it will give off and the more energy output it will have. Therefore, if we're talking about objects that have luminosity due to their temperature, big and hot objects have greater luminosity than small, cooler objects. By surface area, we mean the actual area on the surface of an object. For example, if you had a cube, you could take the length times the width, multiply by six, and that would be the full surface area of the cube. But things in space are not cubical in general. Often you'll find spherical objects like stars. So the surface area of a star or a sphere is 4 pi times the radius squared. Now, in luminosity, we're thinking of the collective surface area of the whole object. And we also look at the surface temperature. And so we can think of an object that has a surface area of being broken up into many little bits of surface area. Each little bit gives off some number of photons per second. The hotter that surface, the more photons each little bit will give off. So each little piece of surface area gives off some energy, and luminosity is the total amount of energy given off by every place on the surface and across all the different wavelengths of light that are being radiated out. The bigger the temperature, the more the radiation that will occur at a given spot on the surface. So if you wanted to change the luminosity of an object, you could keep the area the same, but you just have to raise its temperature. Let's do a few examples of this. So I've got an image here of an electric stove, something you are probably familiar with, and there are two hot plates on this electric stove. In the image, it looks like one is brighter, that's the bottom one, and one is 
uh, less bright, and that's the one on the top. They're both the same size, that is, they both have the same surface area, but the top plate is at a lower temperature and the bottom plate is at a higher temperature. And so which one is more luminous, the top one or the bottom one? Well, the bottom one has to be more luminous for two things to have the same surface area, but one of them to be uh, hotter, the hotter one has to be more luminous. And in this case, you can actually see the difference. Let's talk about stars. Let's do a few examples where we compare the luminosities of stars. Here I've got two stars that are the same temperature, but they're different sizes. So in this case, temperature is the same, but one is bigger than the other. The one that's larger is going to have a bigger luminosity. What if I change it up? What if now I've got dim uh, I'm what if now I have different temperatures and different sizes? Some cases this is straightforward, but in other cases it's not. In this case it's fairly simple. The larger object is also the hotter object, therefore it'll have uh, larger values than the smaller cooler object in general. So the larger hotter object will have a bigger luminosity. But what about this case? We've got different temperatures and different sizes, and we're encountering a problem. The larger star is cooler in temperature, and the smaller star is hotter in temperature. And I can tell this by looking at the color. That's a lesson for later. But right now I can just tell you that cooler objects are redder in color. And so I have a larger object that's lower in temperature and a smaller object that's higher in temperature, and I want to know which one is more luminous. This is difficult. I don't have any property in common here, either luminosity, temperature, or surface area, and so it's difficult to make a concrete comparison without knowing some value or number to put in here. Because it could be that the larger object, even though it's cooler, is more luminous, but at which point is it large enough for that to occur? And so this is difficult, without having something in common or without using numbers. Let's look at another way and at another way to visualize the different values that go into luminosity. I have a chart here, and in astronomy, this is called an HR diagram, and in this introductory course, we'll be using it quite a bit. The chart plots the luminosity in solar units, that is compared to the sun versus the temperature or surface temperature of an object. Notice that there's something very peculiar about the way the axes work here. The y-axis is the luminosity and one solar luminosity is in the middle and then you can go down into smaller so, uh, luminosities and then larger above that. But on the temperature scale, the x-axis, hotter temperatures are on the left and cooler temperatures are on the right. This is a very peculiar thing in astronomy and uh, you just have to get used to it. And so I have here five objects that are marked out on the graph and we can make some comparisons between them. If I wanted to compare the uh, objects A and B, well I know that A is much more luminous than B. A looks like it's almost 1,000 solar units in luminosity, and B is 0 .001, which is 1,000th the luminosity of the sun. So A is much tremendously more luminous than B. But they're at the same temperature. So how can I compare their sizes? In this case, because they're at the same temperature, but one is more luminous than the other, then the other property that comes into play must be larger. So the more luminous object has to be much larger in size. So A is much greater in surface area than B. What about the objects A, A and D? They both have the same luminosity, but they're different temperatures. Uh, 
D is much hotter and A is much cooler in surface temperature. And if you recall, this was a difficult comparison before. But in this case, I know that they're both the same luminosity. They're both giving off the same amount of energy, D and A. And so the only way for object A to give off the same amount of energy per second as D and yet be at a lower temperature is for A's surface area to be much greater than D. A must be tremendously large even though it's at a low temperature. We can compare uh, D with C. This is a case where you've got an object that is more luminous and hotter than a cooler object which is less luminous. The size comparison here would be that D must be larger than C. When you do the lecture tutorial on luminosity, temperature, and size, you'll be able to work with this chart and come to a better intuitive grasp of how these things compare. So I think you've got enough information to work with this now. Good luck.